Shalom, my fellow Jews and my fellow righteous individuals of this world. So anyway, I want to make a brief video explaining why the, um, both the Reform and Conservative movements and much of the secular world today has not only abandoned Judaism, but has misinterpreted what the Torah has actually said. Now, I should make note, I'm not orthodox um, for a variety of reasons. I'll get into that. But... Um, but as far as this, I'm just Jewish. I can say, you know, I, I'm a Jew. I don't label myself. But as far as what the reform and conservative movements have endorsed, they have endorsed many abominations of Torah. The two main things as far as general categories of abominations are prohibitions regarding ritualistic mitzvot and then, of course, moral mitzvot, how to be pure, how to have kedusha or, or holiness as we call it in Judaism. So question becomes, what kind of things do they endorse? Well, first of all, we have to understand um, the reform movement really started all this. The conservative movement just sort of adopts some of the things over time. But some of those, the moral things I should start off with, because they're the more serious ones, some things are endorsing that intermarrying is okay, um, gay marriage is okay, sex before marriage is okay, gay marriage ceremonies are okay, you know, having sex with a gay person is okay, you know, if you know, you being gay, you having sex with the same gender, it's not okay, and it's against what God says. How do we know this? Well, in Parsha Bereshit, or Parsha Genesis, the first Parsha of the Torah, say for Torah, the Torah scroll, God says, be fruitful and multiply, but right after, God actually says ex in explicit language in the Hebrew, you know, um, I, I apologize, God says, be fruitful and multiply explicitly in the Hebrew after he says, I've created male and female in my image. So, basically, it's implying God is saying, I create us in his image, you know, allowing us to be, you know, um, to, to have the mitzvah, the commandment to be fruitful and multiply. Um, so every Jewish, every Jewish source confirms that, um, that talk touches upon this, confirms that marriage is only between a Jewish man and Jewish woman, and same with sex. It's only between a Jewish man and Jewish woman in Judaism, obviously, because obviously Gentiles, you know, they're non-Jews. They they obviously they obviously have the mitzvah and commandment too to do that. But so those are the moral things. Simply put, the I shouldn't even call it ritualistic, but the things that are more like Jewish based, like for neshama or Jewish soul, as we call it in Judaism. Some things that we have to understand is that the reform movement started this endorsement that of this pick-and-choose attitude, if you don't feel like doing something, you don't have to. So saying breaking Shabbat is okay. Saying breaking um, Yom Tov is okay. For example, Yom Kippur and Pesach or Sukkot. You know, saying um, it's okay to not keep kosher, even if you have an abundance of kosher food around you. And just, you know, just because you don't feel like doing it, it's not okay, and it's going against God. Now, it's one thing if, you know, you're barely having enough food to survive, and you got to have non kosher food, and it's another thing if, you know, you have to work, and that's the only way you live, or, you know, you have to work on Shabbat, okay, but in most of these cases, you know, it's more than possible to keep kosher. Um, it's more than possible, at least to a certain extent, um, people can... You know, make an effort. It's definitely more than possible to keep Shabbos in a lot of cases. But it's but forgetting that if it's possible, the problem is not if it's possible or not. The problem is that the reform and conservative movements in recent years have endorsed that it's okay to publicly desecrate Shabbos. Much more the reform movements, although some conservative mo leaders are saying the same thing. But they because they the question becomes how did this come about? Well, what we have to understand is that the reform movement endorsed this idea that the Torah is not divine. And God forbid, the Torah is not from God, God forbid, you know. And it's, of course that's not true, the Torah is divine, the Torah is from God. But when people have this mindset, it gives people the idea that they can just pick and choose whatever they want. And Shabbos isn't holy, and Shabbos you can just do whatever. So a lot of Reformed Jews, and some growing number of conservative Jews, they just think, well, on Shabbos I can hold a job, you know, and it'll be okay. If, as long as I find meaning in the job or something like that. I can, I can buy and sell on Shabbos and it's okay, you know. I can... 
go out to, go, go out to eat and go to the gym on Shabbos. You know, it's not okay, and it it is a desecration of Shabbat and it's a desecration of God's name. It's and in my opinion, in many ways, it's even more of a desecration of God's name for leaders to be telling people this, especially the leaders who know what they're doing. You know, I, I understand people are raising the reform, reform movement or whatever, but so now I'm going to get into very briefly why I'm not Orthodox. What we have to understand is that in Judaism, there's the written Torah, the Torah Shabbat Chetav. And the oral Torah or the Torah Shabbat Alpeh. Torah Shabbat and the Torah Shabbat Alpeh. The written Torah just sort of had, you know, those commandments we need to do. The oral Torah explains those commandments in much more detail and expounds upon those commandments. Now, the Talmud, it, the oral law was put into writing because it became harder and harder for Jews to be able to, if we fear that the oral law would be forgotten. So much of it was put into the Talmud. The thing is the Orthodox have misinterpreted that the Talmud is divine when it's really just written down. You know, although there are a lot of divine principles in it, it's not divine. But the reason I'm not Orthodox is because the Orthodox have added many things to Torah and claim it's divine. Citing things from the Talmud, citing things from recent books like 400 years ago and that's the problem because um in my not i shouldn't say problem but that's the reason i'm not orthodox because i don't believe in saying everything in the talmud we have to view is like halacha or jewish law as we call it um everything in the talmud is not there's allegory in the talmud as you all may know you know for example mesechad pesach tractate pesach there's mention it's mentioning of evil evil spirits evil angels potions healing kinds of sicknesses and i think other parts of the talmud i don't know about tractate pesach passover but the important thing to remember is that the talmud has a lot of allegories that are not you know really meant to be taken as jewish law but i should add there are divine traditions passed down orally from mount sinai that are given in mount sinai but again just because it's in the talmud doesn't mean it's divine divine nevertheless we need the talmud for things like the hebrew calendar how to write a torah scroll kosher slaughter how to keep shabbat how to keep Yontif, how to rest on Shabbat, how to rest on Yontif. Laws of modesty are mentioned to a good deal. Um, and there's also the view they have, especially on things like the Code of Jewish Law, the Shulchan Aruch. It's not divine. And it really just kind of summarizes things, just like the Rambam or Maimonides or any Jewish commentator would. But it, 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 it has a lot of laws that are just added that unfortunately Jews have incorporated and viewed as Torah law. For example, I know... Th- with 100% certainty that not everything is to be taken literally in the Talmud, that it's not necessary to wear a head covering if you're a male. It's not um, necessary to, um, or you know, to to dress one way, you know. And then there's other things too. People say, you know, what they, I, and forgive me if I'm, if I come across as inappropriate, but people say that like what they call pagama breed or wasting seed is sinful, so sinful for a male, it's like, you know, murdering millions of people, God forbid, when really, I mean, there's no valid halachic Torah source that says it. There's a reference in the Gemara, but really it's just, you know, <clears throat> not really divine information. It's just, it's it, it, it's opinion. I mean, it really is. How do we know this? Well, what's worse, someone doing something or to someone wasting seed or what you know the dictator did in the holocaust you know what i mean but literally the talmud basically says that it's worse than that and including definitely the zohar you know that's another thing kabbalah sort of like idolizes certain things and it doesn't really connect people to god it has a lot of ideas like gematrias and things that are not torah based you have people speaking out against gematrias and then they eat their own words as orthodox people believing in it you know i mean so i think the reason i can't consider my myself orthodox is because and i don't consider myself orthodox is because and i'm not orthodox is because there's unfortunately many things that have been added over the years and i'm certain have been added over the years um <coughs> excuse me i mean but yeah i mean so that's about it um so in short all that i really want to get out tonight is that there's some things there's obligations that you must do you know um and one of them just talking about general obligations some of the big ones that so many people forget are keeping kosher and keeping shabbat and keeping um yondof but when i say keeping shabbat and keeping yondof i don't mean like kiddush and abdallah on shabbos um that actually i mean technically i mean th- those are later later things that were added they're not 100 percent required by halacha but what is required is resting on shabbat you know um sanctification some people would say 
um, Kiddush and Vavdala. It's really just a matter of resting. That's how you sanctify it. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so resting on Shabbat, that's what we need to do. Um, we need to stop saying we can just pick and choose things, and that's why I'm not going to keep kosher. You know, it's one thing if it's very hard for you or something like that. Like, I'll be the first to admit right now I'm not keeping kosher because I'm in a very poor situation where I'm poor and don't have much money. And I'll I'll admit that. Um, and I actually don't have tzitzit for the same reason. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's a work in progress. But I will say this, you know, um, we, we should try as Jews to do as much as we can. Judaism is all or nothing. On Shabbos, you know, um, you know, make some nice meals, you know, um, before Shabbos. Maybe put them in a slow cooker, um, something to keep it warm so you don't violate the prohibition of, you know, um, um, cooking on Shabbat. Um, but yeah, besides that, it's for, and I should also point out the Orthodox people are very nice, loving people. I live in Orthodox neighborhood in Baltimore, and there's very loving Orthodox Jews there who invite me over for Shabbat meals on Shabbos, you know, who are kind, loving. The, pro, the thing I didn't like about everything, not them specifically per se, but just everything was that it didn't seem like there was a sense of acceptance. If you did something a little differently, you weren't accepted, you know what I mean? Like, if you dressed a little differently and didn't wear a head covering one day, you forgot your yarmulke blew, blew off in the wind, you know, and, you know, they saw you breaking Shabbat, although they should confront you, it wouldn't be even that. It would actually be, like, just, like, they wouldn't want to talk to you, you know what I mean? Even if you did it, like, you had to go to the hospital or something. I, well, I don't know. I'm just, that's just an example. But I can just honestly say there was a lot of judgment, like, if you believe something differently. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> But yeah, so, but yeah, going back to the main point, I know I keep flipping back and forth, but I must get this out. Reform Judaism and conservative Judaism, there's no such thing. I mean, really, essentially, it's just saying I can pick and choose what I want. This is a call to all Reform Jews and conservative Jews, or anybody who's not Orthodox, or even anybody who's Orthodox who wants to just stick to Torah. Stick to Torah, you know, don't add to Torah like a lot of very pious people do they, but at the same time, don't subtract the Torah and say, this is not divine, this is not from God, I can just pick and choose, because none of those things are true. The Torah is divine, the Torah is from God. It's not something to pick and choose commandments unless you actually have to, like if you can't afford enough food or something like that to get kosher food, like I was mentioning, or if you have to work on Shabbat to feed your family. But other than that, at all costs, you should um, just do what is good, you know, and um, do what you can, and um, and of course, uh, do good in this world. I mean, th I didn't touch up on so much the moral commandments, like doing good, loving your fellow um neighbor, you know, loving your fellow Jew, righteous individual, um, that even righteous individuals that are not Jewish, but they're self-explanatory and they're ultimately are taught throughout the Torah and Judaism. But as far as what we need to focus on, that's, that's really what I want to get out. So, um, so that's about it. Hope you all have a great uh, night and tomorrow, of course, a great uh, Shabbos for all you Jews out there. And, um, and that's about it. So I appreciate it. Uh, shalom Aleichem to all my fellow Jews, all my fellow Yidden, and uh, take care. Shalom. Bye. Shalom.